Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the third video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own first person shooter game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover importing the player assets and making our game playable. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So up until now we have an area, although it does look rather small, that is playable. We can actually have our character walk around in there if we had one. But how do we do this? Well, the great thing about Unity is it's very versatile and it's very useful towards beginners. They are helpful in what they do and create. And in saying that, they've created something called Starter Assets. And the Starter Assets are what helps you develop your games and make them more dynamic to how you would want them to be. How do we get this in our game? Well, at the top here, if you're using Unity 6, you'll see something called Asset Store. And we can use that for many different things. And if you have heard the term of asset flipping, I do have videos on what asset flipping actually is. Don't worry about it. Uh, we're not asset flipping here. We are using the assets for their intended purpose for us to learn and create. Uh, if you're not in Unity 6, you're in an older version, you can just head to Unity Asset Store or you can Google Unity Asset Store and you'll have the same sort of thing because all this really is, is just a link to the website. So whichever way you do it, this is how you can get onto the Unity Asset Store. And I'm going to do this in real time as well so you can actually see me importing the correct assets at the correct time. So once you're here, all you need to do is type in starter assets and it will take you to a page where you can find all starter assets. So you've got third person, first person character controllers. Because we're doing a first person shooter, we would want the first person. So if we click on this, you'll see a button here that either says add to my assets or download if you've downloaded it previously. But essentially all you need to do is once you've clicked everything you need, you'll be able to open in Unity. And it will present you with this package manager. This package manager is where you'll find any assets that you've bought on the asset store, and this is how you can import them into your project. So in doing that, we've now got this button here that says import 1.3 to project. And what that means is it's asking you to import the latest version, which is version 1.3, into your project. So you would click it. And you may get this warning saying that the pack uh, has package man dependencies. That's fine. All this is, is that's telling you that this particular asset relies on certain things within Unity. You just need to install upgrade and it will do it automatically for you. Once you're presented with this, the package manager import window, you just click on import. Give it a couple of seconds to bring all the assets into Unity. Depending on your connection, how quick it wants to download. For me, it's already downloaded. It's already on my machine. So this installation package will be done fairly quickly. As you can see, it's speeding along quite nicely. And we are done. Once it's disappeared, you can then close down that package manager. Nothing looks too drastically different right now, but you will notice that this folder called starter assets is now here. We can head in here and then head into first person head into prefabs, and then we have four different options. Firstly, let me explain what a prefab is. A prefab you can think of as a collection of objects and components that can be imported into Unity as one single object. In this case, the object is the player controller. So we can bring that in, no problem. And right now, it doesn't really look like anything. It's nothing important at all. And if we were to go to our game view, we wouldn't see anything different. However, let's press the play button. When we do, you'll notice that the camera doesn't change. However, if we use the WASD keys or the arrow keys, you've then got something moving around. And we can actually use this to our advantage. This is now a controller that we've brought in. Unity, like I said, Unity Technologies has specifically created these assets for people like you, people like me, to learn and create with. Let's head back to scene view. And next to it, we have this called main camera. We have a main camera in our scene. However, this main camera isn't much use to us as it is. 
So what we can do is if we go to our player capsule just here, click on the arrow, and you'll see player camera root. Drag and drop this main camera onto player camera root. What this will do is it will attach a first person camera that we can use to our first person controller. Next, the original main camera, the one in the white up here, we can disable this. So this little tick right here, click on it and it will disappear. Next, if we go to our game view, you'll notice that the camera has changed. The angle is now different. If we press play, we'll be able to see that our character can indeed now move around with our camera. Perfect. Now, things have become very, I would say, evident at this point that the scale of the wall, at least, is not quite right. So, this is a perfect opportunity for us to change the scale of our game. So, all I did there was hold control and press P. And that is a real quick way of playing and stopping your game. Easy. So, Let's now take a look at our scene. Let's now build it up in accordance with how our character looks. What we'll do is we will select the top bit of the wall and the bottom bit of the wall. Let's now hold control to do that. So top bit of the wall, hold control, bottom bit of the wall. Easy. That's how we can group multiple objects together and manipulate them in sync. So we can now hold control and pull down the green arrow. Cool. Now, let's see how that looks for our game. Do we think we look too close to the floor? Quite possibly. Do we want to be higher? Yeah, I would say that would be a good idea. So, let's take the camera that is on our main camera route. So, this main camera, double click, zoom in a little bit, and let's lift it up just a touch. You could theoretically press zero on the X, zero on the Y, and that will put it dead center of your capsule. But if we go to game, we look far too low. We look like a child playing. So make sure when we do this, that we bring the camera up. Let's set it to 1.5. Press play again. And I think this looks about right. I think we'll stick at this for now. So finally, let's now build up the rest of this area that we can test in. So what we'll do is we'll take this object, so hold control again and select this object. Hold control, press D to duplicate. And we can bring this outwards. So I'm holding control and shifting with the mouse. Now we can either rotate this object to create this section of the wall, or we could change the X and the Z. Let's change the X to 1. Let's change the Z to 20. And then hold control and bring it closer once again. Cool. So now everything is coming together. Everything looks like it is part of a level. Let's bring this outwards to there. And let's do the same over here. However, we don't really need to do much. What we can do is select the bottom bit of the wall and the top bit, hold control, press D, and just move them along. Like so. So now everything is coming together like a test level. So let's press play once again. And there we go. So we're now in a test area that we can run around in, look around in, all good. Feel free to build this up a little bit more than what it is. You don't need to keep it square. You can build it up as big or as little as you want. Another trick you can use is keeping these two selected. You can change, let's say, the Z to 20. Bring it out to maybe there. And that looks okay. So we can take the floor, hold control, press D to duplicate, slide it out to there, and do it once again. Bring it here. So now we've created quite a large environment. So we're not just restricted to that very small area that we had. There we go. So we can come out, 
have a look around. I will go back in and it all looks good. So what I would recommend you do at this point, like I say, is build a test area using this very simple mechanic just to build it up as best you can. Because next time what we're going to do, we're going to bring in a weapon. We're going to bring in our first gun and we're going to start C sharp programming because we need to be able to fire that gun. So we're going to do some stuff that will make our gun look like it's firing. Obviously there'll be a lot more to it, we'll have some noise and everything else, but for all intents and purposes, next tutorial, bring in a gun and we'll start firing it. Uh, so remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, and I'll see you in the next one.